are we? <laughs> we are in Oakland at a fundraiser for City Slicker Farms, which is an urban gardening organization based in West Oakland. Oh, and introduce your friend. This is my friend Barbara Liffey, and she is our newest board member. Congratulations, Barbara. Thank you, and I'm actually Barbara Lafitte Oluwale. This is my husband, Olu Oluwale. Hey, Olu, how are you? I'm fine. I'm, yeah, it's my good. pleasure to be here. Nice to, nice to meet you as well. This is going to be a lot of fun event, yes? Sure. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I've been a backyard gardener with City Slicker Farms for about four or five years now. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. and I am on the board of directors of City Slicker Farms. Cool. And now I'm on the board of directors. <laughs> All right. This beer is a local honey wheat beer. The uh, the yeast. Hello, I'm Dylan. The, the yeast uh, is from a sourdough starter that I have been making bread with now for a little over four years. And last year I just looks good. Does that look good? Yeah. Last year I just became obsessed with the idea that brewers and bakers used to be the same thing or get yeast from each other. Yeah. For let's see, thousands of years until about 150 years ago when we finally had packaged yeast. So I wanted to kind of recreate that. I thought if I can do bread with local yeast, why not beer? What's the website? Uh, the website for yeah, for your beer. So people want to buy. Oh, for my beer. Um, I actually do keep a food blog. It's called Sourdough Monkey Wrangler because I am a stay-at-home. Well, what? I am a stay-at-home parent. I've been dubbed a monkey wrangler. Oh, cool! And I love sourdough, so my blog is Sourdough Monkey Wrangler, all one word, at blogspot.com. Yeah, if you look at that, you won't see my name on there. I tend to keep it pretty uh, anonymous. Uh -oh. Not anymore. <laughs> well, for the protection of my children, more or less. But yeah, I've, I've talked about. I talk a lot about beer and bread and various. Yeah. Wild ferments on I'll there. take that glass. Okay. Hey, thank you very much. Enjoy. Barbara, tell yes. my viewers about City Slicker Farms. City Slicker Farms is an amazing nonprofit organization in West Oakland, and we are working with low income families to grow their own food. And there's a different strategy that we're doing. We're helping people grow it in their own homes, and we're also taking vacant lots and transforming them into what we call community market farms where we're growing all this food, raising chickens, raising bees, all to distribute through a farm stand so, so people in West Oakland can have access to the fresh, healthy food that they need hmm. that's just not available in right. West Oakland. Okay. How's it going so far? It's going great. It's great. We've been growing since 2001. We have worked with over 115 families to grow their own food mm -hmm. um, and we have about 110 families that are still involved. It's an amazing retention rate. Oh. Um, and then our community market farm program has going, been going strong. People are coming to the farm stand every week to get the vegetables they need. Yeah. Yes. Website? Website is www.cityslickerfarms.org. And we're off to dinner, right? And I'm sorry? And we're off to dinner, right? And we're off to dinner. Let's go have some dinner. That's good. Tell me about your involvement with Sleek, Sleek City Slicker Farms. Which one? Um, Willow? You first. <laughs> well, um, I was the founder of the organization, so it was oh. a funny brainchild I got back in 2000, and I bought an empty lot. With, well, a friend gave me the money oh, to buy the okay. lot, loaned it to me. I worked it off in sweat equity working on his house. And uh, then with a group of friends, strangely enough, Laura was yeah. among them. Back it's so funny beginning. that you just asked us to, to answer this together because um, she was, you know, among the first people that I recruited through her friend Nan. Nan was really my partner in crime, and, and then Laura came shortly after. And Laura, you got involved out here. Through, through Nan, and okay. uh, there was no garden there. Or there was, I remember back when there was one bed. Now it's this amazing you said flourishing. Nan, Nan, a, fr a mutual friend mutual of ours. Mutual friend. Yeah, okay. a mutual friend. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And how long ago was this? Give us a picture. 2000, 2001. 2001. 2002. 2002. Something like that. And like she said, there it was just an empty lot full of garbage, and we had to g dig it all out for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Trying and to then, remediate the soil yeah. with mushrooms that didn't. That yeah. Going to take 20 years. And add <laughs> lots of compost and. And then all the folks in the neighborhood would walk by and say, what are you doing? And pretty soon they were, we would be like, come help us dig. Nice. <laughs> 
so why has this, I'm ask you a dumb question, why has this taken on in the way that it has? You know, why has it become popular? Right. It's an interesting question. I think it may seem sudden, but I think it's actually a very, very slow process. People back in the, there have been waves of, of community gardening and urban farming going back probably to the 1800s, but you know, we had victory gardening in World War I and World War II. Um, in the 60s, a lot of people got really excited about all the natural things that they possibly could, and gardening was one of them. And then my generation, I'm the kid of hippies, and we carried on the, the idea, and I think it's, so really you could say it's taken about 100 years to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> but City Slicker Farm itself, I think, didn't you, uh, the, one of the things that you found was that, like, like having people having plots and gardens didn't always work. Like the, you know they'd get interested and then not be interested. So the fact that you kind of started something where you you kept maintaining it but involving the community and people could come right. in and help and take yeah. from it. Right. You know, and exchange. Yeah, that's true. I think I always felt like it's good to make decisions together with a group, but it's also good to have somebody who's responsible for getting the stuff done at the end of the day. And so that's kind of how we did the work, you know. Uh, I was responsible. <laughs> and, <laughs> so um, you took responsibility. I took responsibility, and I also worked a lot to, you know, involve people so that they could then start to feel like they wanted to take responsibility, and a lot of people did. And, and then also, I think um, we just were always dependable. Like every week, we would put out the, the harvest on a card table on the sidewalk. And we never failed to do it. We wouldn't be like, oh, I feel like going away this weekend, so I'm not going to do it. You know, it was like every Saturday for years. Wow. And so I think that dependability and people knew that they could count on it. And so it was just something that they could trust in. And then we found that we couldn't get enough land. And so um, we came up with the backyard garden support idea to help people grow their own food. And I think that's really what people wanted, is to be able to grow their own in their own yards, have their own thing, but we provided all the support, all the materials, mentoring, and it just, you know, I really asked myself, why aren't people already growing food if they don't have enough money to, to eat? So question, it yeah. was that they didn't have the supplies and we provided so that. So wait, wait, that, that begs the question. Do you, you guys think the economy is pushing us in this direction? Yes. Right? You know? Especially in other parts of the country where things are much worse, but here too. Yeah. I mean, if you read what's going on in Philadelphia, Detroit, you know, I mean, there's massive scale urban agriculture going on because people need to eat. Yeah. Laura, you want that? Well, I think people also realize that there's a, that it's easy to make to have good food, and that yeah. there's some problem with our food supply. If all these people are having obesity problems and other health problems, that eating fresh, healthy food is good. And this was the tradition. I mean, West Oakland's predominantly African American, and this is the tradition in that community. Really healthy eating traditions, collard, collard greens. You know, a lot of good stuff. It's funny you mention that because, like, I work for the mayor, but I'm with Freddie Harris when he was the mayor. And we were, I was telling Kelly, we were trying to get real grocers in there for years that served food that you would want to eat. Yeah. And it hasn't happened. So you say that, yeah, but it's like, say for a handful of really powerful activists yeah. who made a lot of change in the West, right? <laughs> and you probably know some people I'm talking about. Oh, who, yeah, I do. One of them was on the uh, Oakland, uh, Board of Oakland Commission now. I forgot her name. You oh. know? You know what I'm talking about, right? You see, you see no. her face. Okay. But anyway, it seems like it's still a long time coming in West Oakland. Or am I wrong? Right. Well, you know, it's, it comes down to money and power. I mean, West Oakland, it used to be a self-sufficient economy there with black-owned businesses. Yeah. And that was destroyed. And now we have to stop. Oh, I think we're getting started. Okay, thanks, please. Hey, Noella Carpenter, thank you for your time. And congratulations on your book, Farm City, about Oakland. Right. How did it come about? So, um, Farm City happened um, because I'm a farmer and a writer. Um, and I had been uh, doing some farming in Seattle. I moved to Oakland. Um, and I started um, thinking about my experiences, you know, like raising a Thanksgiving turkey or raising two pigs in my backyard. And um, I had always sort of disconnected farming from writing. Um, and then I went to journalism school and I studied with um, Michael Pollan and other professors there. At Berkeley? At Berkeley, yeah, their journalism school. And, um, you know Paul Grabowitz? Yeah, 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 
yeah, yeah. Was, was just grabs, just, hey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, and I was like, oh yeah, I took this food writing class with Michael. I was like, oh, what should I write about? And then I started telling him about this Thanksgiving turkey that I was raising, and he was like, that. Ah, of course and I had this aha moment of being like oh I should be writing about farming and so I started doing that um, and uh, sold my book I wrote some essays for salon.com and um, they elicited a huge response from people and um, so uh, I got an agent it almost sounds like the Amy Adams movie what is the Amy Julie, Adams Julia Julia and Julia it was a little bit but it wasn't I wasn't blogging at the time I was just writing articles yeah um, um, and so somewhat an agent approached me and said, hey, that's a great idea for a book, this whole thing about your um, farm. And so I started writing um, about the farm and put together the book proposal and then sold it. So. Why Oakland? Um, Oakland is actually a great place to farm uh, because of the weather. I mean, it, this is amazing. Northern California is great weather. Um, and also because people are um, multi-ethnic, you know, so you have like lots of like, for instance, I have goats now. and um, you you know, the guy who owns the liquor stores from Yemen, and he used to be a goat herder. I remember you talking about getting your goats knocked up. Yeah. Which like, like akin to being like genetic engineering. Oh, no, no, no. I brought a, I brought a stud goat I just, home. I was just kidding on you. No, I, I know, I know. <laughs> Mr. Lincoln, he's not genetic engineering. Um, so he came and serviced my girls. But yeah, what? so I get, I get all this information from Moses about raising goats. So it's like, it's kind of like, there's that information still out there, and people aren't like, you know, I mean, like Berkeley, where they would be like, oh, you can't do that, that's illegal. Well, Oakland is just like, hey, cool, you wanna do that, I wanna do this. It's it's a nice mishmash. So, is this your, your first book, second? Yeah, it's my first book, yeah. How does it feel going on a book tour and... Uh, yeah. It's been great, and the cool thing about book, uh, touring with uh, an urban farming book is that when I go to a major city, I'm just like, take me to your urban farmer. And so, every city has people like Willow, you know, who've started these urban farms. Why now? Is it, because we were talking before. Yeah. Is it the economy? I think it's everything. It's just kind of coming together for a perfect storm. Okay. Where it's like people are suffering uh, economically. They're like, God, I don't have a job. And there's also this push to eat healthy organic food. And But then there's that pressure of like, well, I don't have a job. How am I going to eat organic healthy food? But I have a lot of time on my hands now. And so people start to just do more DIY projects like building gardens or raising chickens. Um, and there's also, I think, a sense of um, real dissatisfaction with the technology and our life just like I've just been sitting in front of a computer for like five hours mm -hmm. and so people want to get outside and so oftentimes they want to get outside and garden or you know plant some tomatoes or hold a chicken or <laughs> milk a goat yeah. so I think that's <laughs> what's going on uh, how much of this also is the realization that I think about television programs like uh, Fast Food Nation. Oh, yeah. You know, that, yeah. hey, we've just filled this bill of goods about nutrition in fast foods, and now people are beginning to slowly wake up, you know, and mm -hmm. is that, is it, is, I think is, that's, it, is, is it an advent of our yeah. communications where yeah. we can blog these things and get them out, and now there's this counter media out yeah. there? Yeah, you know? yeah, I think so, I mean, there's definitely a sense of like, oh, well, instead of being like, don't eat at McDonald's, you're like, eat your own food that you grew. Yeah. You know, because there needs to be something positive about that. And actually, you know, um, Bryant Terry was here tonight. He's like a amazing uh, vegan chef. Huh. And he's all about eating healthy food. And so it's like offering an alternative instead of just saying like, don't do that. That was the guy at my table? Yeah. I wish you were more outgoing. Oh, yeah. I should have nice grabbed guy. him. He's a guy. Yeah, you should have grabbed him. He's, I did, but I didn't he's know. He's a celebrity. I, did, I didn't know. Yeah. But see, it's like, he's, we have these micro cultures. Everybody's a celebrity here, here, here. I know, here. right? Like, yeah. What do you? Who is? Yeah, everyone's right. a celebrity in their own way, but, yeah. he, did, kind of cool but he does great work because, um, you know, it's part of this idea of, um, you know, it's like the 80s, like Nancy Reagan, just say no. What the hell is that? We have to say yes to stuff. And yeah. so being like, you can eat this. This is really healthy. Here's how you cook. It's fun. It's fun to grow food, you know. And so making it this really positive thing um, just adds a different spin to it. I want to have a little fun there. How did you meet Willow? And how did she tie I met Willow. Willow. Well, I met Willow. We, we, we just agree about how we met but really? um, yeah I had a, there used to be a speakeasy across the street from my house that I would go to um, it was like part of the whole underground Oakland scene in the early 2000s. Did she get you drunk? 
she didn't get me drunk. I was trashed already. Oh, you're And oh. she actually she got sang. You more drunk. Yeah, she now, hold sang. Hold on a second. <laughs> Willow. She says know? you got her more drunk. Well, I don't really. I know. See, this is what I'm saying. She disagrees. <laughs> no, I just don't know. Willow, I, don't I don't think know. Willow drank. I think we. No, were, I don't drink. Very I think much. what we were doing is I was um, getting drunk, and then she was performing. She sang a song. Oh, what'd you sing? Oh, I, some some folk song. I don't remember. Country music. Country, Country music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Trisha yeah. Yearwood. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little out of touch. I'm a little out of touch. That's new country. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, it was probably some old like Doc Watson song or something. Mm-hmm. So help me connect things because you and I were talking before mm-hmm. about the rise of the movement, but also talk about what she has done with her book. Yeah. You know, and where we are today. Yeah. In I hate to use the word term food movement because it sounds like a cliche. I know. And I don't feel like I'm the right term. And I'm not really part of the movement. I still eat. Yeah, I know. Junk. Right? Food so movement. It's kind of I like think me. it sounds like bowel movement. You're like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, food movement, and then you go, oh, food movement. We need a better Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what to call that, but, um, you know, one thing that's interesting is that as somebody in the food movement, okay. you know, when I go home at night, guess what I don't want to read? Yeah. Okay? I don't want to read, I don't, I don't really want to read, you know, a really dense book about the politics of food or, you know, a really dense gardening instructional book or something. And so I think Novella's book, at least for those of us in the movement, is just a very needed break from the sanctimonious attitude. No, wait, wait, wait. I gotta ask you because there's this guy who's a Cal professor who someone said I should meet named Michael Pollan. Right. What do you think of him? He's great. He's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, a he- he's a complete hero he's a of mine. Hero. He's a hero because he said... So, the, so there's he no like, said political of, disconnect, right? No, no, no. He said some of these foods... We w- can you really call it food? And you know, to have somebody come out and say this is not food is just revolutionary and for my work that helped me so yeah. much what he did helped me so much i'm sorry we can't give you any dish yeah uh, in no the movement juice. we no. love michael paul he actually is a great guy he just is he he's is. just a great guy mm-hmm. so how do we take this from the garden to the schools mm-hmm. are there oakland restaurants you all recommend that people go to you know what, for me, and, and Novella may have a different perspective, but I have really come to feel that we need to take back our government resources and direct them where we need them to go in terms of food in this country. Are you talking to your council member now? Um, you know, we do, we do do that kind of work, but we're also a grassroots organization, and we've done policy advocacy work and trying to develop funding you know, for, for these kinds of programs that we're running. But it's hard to do both, you know, so we really need other people in the movement to really take that up seriously. But really what we need... You know, rural senators and and Congress people are taking interest in the farm bill because it's about farming, and farming is rural. And what I've been saying and other been saying is we need to interest our urban Congress people. Like if there was an abandoned lot, then you know you should be able to use it. Yeah, you should be able to use it. And right now in in Berkeley, where I'm doing some work, you can't get a business license to grow and sell food if you're in a residential area. They won't give you a home-based business license for that. And so in, in many cities, you know, we can't get we can't do this legally, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're coming up against the codes and legal issues because it's nobody's fault. Farming just was not considered an urban activity. That's what you did in the country. But now we need to change those things, and we need people to just do it and not have it be a huge, big deal. That, like they said, well, you can go apply for a variance for five thousand dollars, and you might not get it. You know. Yeah. I mean, that just really d- dampens the enthusiasm. Yeah. In Berkeley, a city where they have a green. You know, they've passed um, city ordinances about wanting to support, mm-hmm. you know, um, environmental practices. And food is trucked mm-hmm. in from far away. And if we go out here, it's not using fossil fuels. Yeah. You know, you'd think they'd be like, okay, yeah, no, I'm not surprised because there's this, I call it the, I call it the, um, the industrial, the environmental industrial complex. It's like the big yeah. old nonprofits the Sierra Club to people. Right. So, oh. you, know, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, yeah. yeah. So, websites. Where do we go to get your book? 
Um, well, my book, I mean, you can just buy it at, you know, Powell's.com or okay. you can buy it. Um, I don't have, I don't sell any stuff on my website, but I have a blog. It's novellacarpenter.net. Okay. And it's all my crazy adventures and pictures of Mr. It's Lincoln. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, about, it's about her getting goats knocked up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. go to that. It's, like, it's, so sexy. it's so sexy. It's so sexy. It's a porn site. <laughs> oh, yeah. We do a lot of nature porn. Yeah. That's, that's what it's about. And cityslickers.org, right? Yes, it's uh, www.cityslickerfarms.org. Cool. Hey, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have them say, you know what? Farming is an activity. Food is an important thing in urban districts. And if they got involved with that, then it wouldn't just be the usual suspects sitting on that committee saying, okay, uh, rice subsidies. Okay, yeah. check, got mm -hmm. that. Yeah. You know, soybeans, no, soybeans. some more soybeans, yeah. people. Yeah. You want to add to that? No, I mean, I, I agree with what, what she said. Yeah. Um, I think that, and for me, it's more of a personal thing. I think we need everybody doing different th different work. So, like, if you're really good at, like, you know, schmoozing with your congressperson or, mm -hmm. you know, and getting things changed, then that's awesome. Um, but also, Have you, you guys know, talked to Barbara Lee at all? Or? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. great. That's Barbara great. great. Yeah. yeah. She's a supporter. For yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, for sure. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, people are supporters. Like, even Gavin Newsom in San Francisco is, like, yeah. encouraging everyone to dig up their lawns and stuff. Right. But the problem that worth I worry about with government saying like go oh, hey this is great I support this is that then they change their mind later exactly. mm -hmm. and so the, really it has to be people rising yeah. up and saying this is what we want and so yeah. demanding more community yeah. gardens I mean people want to grow food but they don't have land to do it and that's a huge issue hey everybody you, you might you might end up on a blog right. so I can cool. <laughs> uh, that's cool all right hi. hey hey it's great Get that it. looks good. Look at that. It's a wedge wood. Look at that. This is a stove. Wow. It's a wedge wood. Oh, it's like, wow. Definitely. Oh, I gotta have one of these myself. Let me. Oh, it's, it's hot. Help him organize a dinner for City Secret Farms. And you did a wonderful job. Thanks. I gotta ask you about the hat. The hat? Oh, Gun stop. Lake Farm? Oh, no. It's kind of a joke hat. Um, oh, tell me. <laughs> well, it, it appeared at my house uh, randomly. and. Since I work at the farmer's market, they thought, oh, my housemates thought it was appropriate if I wore it. Um, and because I forgot to wear a bandana for a hair tie, I had the hat and it works. Oh, so. Nice. So, Hi. Uh, hey. Good night. See ya. Good night. See ya. See ya. Um, why is urban gardening, if that's the proper term, taking off so much? Oh, that's a big question. Um, it's probably taking off so much. I mean, one could propose that it's in everyone to want to do that, um, taking hold of or taking taking back the things that are most important to them, um, being their food, being their backyard, being a piece of earth. Yeah, hmm. take it back. And uh, it was a good job. <laughs> <laughs>